Greetings. Welcome to Talk Law with Monare. My name is Monare and I'm your host. So, today we are discussing um, a judgment of the Eastern Cape High Court in the matter of Lois Otogo versus the state. Mr. Lois Otogo was charged with one count of rape and was found guilty um, of that um, one count of rape and was sentenced to seven years imprisonment by the regional court Graham's town in the Eastern Cape. So after being found guilty and sentenced to seven years, he then appealed or rather uh, made an application for leave to appeal against the conviction and the sentence in the regional court and the regional court denied him leave to appeal. Then after he went to the Eastern Cape High Court um, for leave to appeal, which was granted uh, by the same court which had the appeal against um, the conviction of rape and imprisonment to, um, of, um, to, uh, of seven years. So our starting point is to um, describe the crime of rape. What is rape um, in terms of South African law? And we start here because we will be discussing the judgment itself wherein the High Court in the Eastern Cape um, found Mr. Togo on appeal not guilty of rape and overturned even the sentence um, of seven years um, imprisonment. So, in terms of the Sexual Offenses Act, it describes rape as unlawfully and intentionally committing an act of sexual penetration with a complainant without the consent of the complainant. So, the important part in the description is that it's unlawful, it's intentional, but the most important part for purposes of our um, discussion is without the consent of the complainant. So, um, a brief um, set of facts is that um, Mr. Um, Togo and the complainant were in a relationship, were in a romantic relationship. Basically, they were dating. And um, they agreed on one night, on the night in question, that they were going to spend the night at Mr. Togo's house. And they went to Mr. Togo's house, but before then, um, the complainant had expressed her intentions not to have sex. So she um, expressly stated that she does not want to have sex on that night or during that night with Mr. Talk. And that, that is a common fact. So what then transpired is that they went to Mr. Togo's place and when they got there, they started kissing and during the kissing, Mr. Togo then removed, undressed basically, basically he undressed the complainant um, during the kissing. And um, after undressing her, or while undressing her, the complainant didn't um, raise any objections. She didn't raise any issues with the fact that Mr. Togo was undressing her. And then after undressing her, Mr. Togo then continued to perform oral sex on her. And when oral sex was being performed on her, again, at this point, she, she doesn't raise any objections um, to oral sex being performed on her. And then um, the oral sex obviously continued and Mr. Togo removed his clothes his clothes and when mr togo removed his clothes again at this point in time the complainant doesn't raise any objections to having sex to mr togo removing his clothes to mr togo continuing with oral sex on her so after removing his clothes mr togo then continued to um, sexually penetrate the complainant and um, based on the evidence of Mr. Togo, the complainant, even at this stage, doesn't raise any objections to being sexually penetrated. However, it was the evidence 
um, is the version of the complainant that um, she raised an objection to being um, penetrated. She told Mr. Togo to stop and she kept crying, which evidence was um, challenged by Mr. Togo. So now, um, that means the core of our discussion, which was the core um, of the court's um, finding or had to be um, at the core of the court's um, determination was that is the question whether there was consent from the complainant or between the parties to have sex. Did the complainant consent to having sex with Mr. Togo, the accused? That is the primary question. And we've, we've already highlighted that at the initial stages, there was no consent, which then means the debate is around at what point did the consent um, come back into play? At what point did the complainant give consent to have sex? Was it when she started kissing Mr. Togo? Was it when Mr. Togo removed head loads without any objection? Was it um, when Mr. Togo started performing oral sex on her without any objection? Was it when Mr. Togo removed his clothes, which um, showed the intention of having sex? Was it was consent given when Mr. Togo started to penetrate her? At what point was consent given? And this is important because um, consent is the core, or rather it's one of the core factors in proving or disproving um, the crime of rape. So, because at the, at, uh, what is available for the judge, for a decision maker in a case, is the evidence that is before him. A decision maker in criminal uh, matters, in criminal cases, must make a finding um, on the evidence beyond reasonable doubt. So all the evidence that is placed before a judge uh, must prove a case, must prove the guilt of the accused. The guilt of Mr. Togo must be proved beyond reasonable doubt. So what beyond reasonable doubt means is that the evidence or the guilt of the accused must be so clearly proved so much that they are accepted or it's accepted as a fact. There mustn't be any reasonable doubt in the mind of the decision maker. So that is the standard of proof in um, criminal law cases. So, um, Judge Mugaitobi, when he made a decision, um, he, 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 he highlighted um, his, um, his doubts um, with regards to the evidence of, um, or on the version of the, 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 the complainant. So, the fact that the judge in Mugaitobi had doubts, that means that the case of the state was not proven beyond reasonable doubt in the opinion of, um, of, of judge in Mugaitobi. So, um, it, it, while it's, it, it, it's difficult for judges in criminal law matters, especially in such matters where one alleges rape, and in a situation where the parties were in a romantic relationship, is that um, there's little available evidence to, to prove um, whether the complainant is telling the truth or whether the accused um, is telling the truth. So now, the primary question is that, did her act of participating in the kissing, in the oral sex, um, where, where this act of participating in oral sex, 
and allowing the the accused to remove his clothing and to penetrate him. Where this acts the foundation um, for for establishing the belief, because it is the evidence of Mr. Togo as the accused that he believed at the time that he penetrated her, the complainant. He believed that there was consent to have sex. So now, um, did this act, oral sex, kissing, removing clothing without any objection on the evidence of um, the accused, did they establish or lay the foundation um, for, for the belief in the mind of the accused, Mr. Togo, that there was consent? Did her failure to expressly state that she doesn't want to have sex during oral sex or during the time that she was being penetrated? Did the failure on her part to, to, to expressly state that she doesn't want to have sex um, amount to consent? So basically, not saying, no, I don't want to have sex. I said, I don't want to have sex. Did her failure to say these words um, amount to consent? Did her participation in oral sex and allowing the accused to sexually penetrate her amount to consent? Because let me give you an example. Let's say I, someone says, I want to go with you or let's go. And I respond by saying, I don't want to go with you or I don't want to go. And then after saying these words, after giving this response, the person opens their car door for me. I enter the, into the car and they start the car and start to move the car. At any point during um, the process where they open the car, I go in, I sit down, they start the car, they start to move. At any point, I don't say, I don't want to go with you. I say, I don't want to go with you. Thus, my failure to repeat um, the statement that I don't want to go with you, does it amount to permission, to consent, to an agreement of going with that particular person? That is, that, is, that is the question to answer. Um, so, um, she, she testified that they had agreed not to have sex. And I assume that this refers to penetrative sex because no way in her evidence does she state that um, she had an issue with oral sex. If anything, she was a willing participant in the oral sex. And um, so the, 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 the question again is, did she tacitly consent to being kissed? Did she tacitly consent for oral sex to be performed? The answer is yes, because as I said, no way in her evidence that she highlight or does she submit that she said no i don't want to kiss you no i don't want you to perform oral sex on me no don't remove my clothing so the answer is yes she tacitly consented she didn't expressly say yes i want to kiss you or yes you can perform oral sex on me but she didn't have any objection which therefore means she agreed for the for mr Togo to perform oral sex on him Did she um, tacitly consent to being penetrated? That is the primary question. One thing is for sure, and um, is the fact that at any point before penetration, she didn't raise any objection. That is what we know for a fact. What is, what is a matter or what is up for a debate um, is whether when she was being penetrated, um, she, 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 she raised an objection or she raised any issue with that. 
So, um, her actions, her actions, I think, um, on the available evidence in terms of the judgment and the evidence that she submitted, her actions of kissing, not objecting to being undressed, participating in oral sex not objecting to the accused taking off his clothes and um, not objecting on the evidence of the accused Mr. Togo not objecting to Mr. Togo penetrating her in my opinion that that um, created an impression, that created a belief that she also wanted to have sex. It's clear that Mr. Togo wanted to have sex. But all these actions on her part, or the leg thereof, saying, I don't want to have sex, pushing him away, stopping him expressly, or showing him because to, to 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 show the intention that you don't want to do something you don't have to necessarily say it but you can do things which communicate um, your intentions you can communicate that you don't want to have sex by pushing someone away you can you can communicate that you don't want to have sex by um, moving away from the bed you can communicate um, that you don't want to have sex by stopping someone from penetrating you, by stopping someone from touching you in a particular way. Those are the actions that you can do to communicate the fact that you don't want to have sex. And it was not her evidence, nor was it the evidence of the state, that there was force or there were threats which were used by Mr. Togo to coerce her into having sex. It's, no, it's, 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 it's nowhere during um, evidence or submissions or examination in chief and cross-examination. It's nowhere where she says she forced himself on, I mean, he forced himself onto me. He overpowered me. I tried to push him away and he just kept coming. I, I, I told him I don't want to have sex and he 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 threatened me with violence nothing no way in evidence at least um, is it that Mr. Togo was being violent was being forceful was being he was threatening her she gave evidence that he pushed him away, but he kept coming. And he was saying in his ear that he's sorry. She submitted that she was crying. That's the evidence that she submitted. Which evidence was challenged by um, by Mr. Togo's legal defense. So, um, the question then becomes, is there any doubt on the version, is there any reasonable doubt on the version of Mr. Togo's evidence? Or did the state prove beyond reasonable doubt on the facts of the case through the evidence that they submitted? Did they prove beyond reasonable doubt? Did they prove so clearly that Judge Ngaidobi could have accepted their submissions as facts that um, the, the complainant withdrew um, consent. I'm, I'm of the view that that's not the case. Because, look, I, I accept that Consent was not there initially because she she submitted without any objection that 
she stated that she doesn't want to have sex. But then the act of kissing combined with the act of allowing your clothes to be removed combined with the act of willingly participating in oral sex combined with the, the act or the lack thereof of not stopping the accused, Mr. Togo, from removing his clothes. This acts combined, not individually. This acts combined. I'm of the view that they, 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 they were enough to create an impression at the very least, to create an impression that she wants or she wanted to have sex. And if that's the impression or the belief that Mr. Togo had when he penetrated her, then that means Mr. Togo, at that particular moment, believed that she agreed, believed that there was consent, notwithstanding the fact that consent was withheld before they got to the house, before they started kissing. There was no consent at that point. They started kissing, oral sex, removed their clothes. On the evidence before the court, on the evidence of the complainant that she thought that they were just going to cuddle and she would get a chance to touch him, his chest, and they would just cuddle. And the evidence of the accused that um, when, she, when he started penetrating her, she didn't object. On, the, on those submissions, with no other evidence for judging Gaitobi to make a decision based on. It's enough to, to, to formulate an impression or a belief that someone agrees to having sex with you. That's my view. I, view, I, I, think, I think all those facts combined were enough for Mr. Gogo to have the impression that we are on the same page. We both want to have sex. Because had it not been the case, expressly or by actions, it should have been communicated that no, we are not on the same page. You know, and it's, it's, it's important. Uh, I mean, a, a crime of rape is... is is um is an extremely um is an extremely serious offense it's a serious crime because it violates a number of rights in the constitution of the country one looks at section 9 right to equality one looks at section 10 right to human dignity one looks at section 12 1 um a right to freedom and security of the person one looks at section 12 2 right to bodily and psychological integrity and one looks um, to some extent um, at section 14 which is the right to privacy and um, the reason that in in, 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 in in criminal law the standard is beyond reasonable doubt is, is because of the, the principle that it is worse to convict an innocent person than to let a guilty person go. So it's better to let a guilty person go um, than to convict an innocent person for the interest of justice. Unfortunately, um, letting an innocent person go or rather letting a guilty person go doesn't serve in any way, doesn't serve the victim 
of that particular crime. So, um, but yeah, it is, it, is, it, is, it is my view that um, the judgment was 100% accurate, was 100% correct, um, based on the evidence that was available for, for, for judging Mugaitobi. Um, but it's, 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 a, it's a learning curve for, 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 a law, for, for legal practitioners because um, I don't think there was, there was a case of this nature before where um, a judge makes a decision because or based on um, the existence or um, reasonable existence of tacit consent. But the most important thing is that the state had to prove its case beyond reasonable doubt. And Judge Nugaitobi clearly stated that he had a doubt in his mind. So he couldn't make a guilty finding if he held um, reasonable doubt in his mind that uh, Mr. Mr. Togo was guilty. That was our analysis of the judgment. Thank you for joining us. For this episode and please hit the subscribe button um also hit the notification but button so that when we upload our content you can join us we appreciate you taking your time to view our content um and we hope to see you next time and remember the law is for justice the law is for reparation and most importantly the law is for building a just open free society thank you for watching